let's run this down really, really quick, guys, okay? When it comes to starting to build your business credit tier by tier, you guys want to make sure before you guys even start to go tier by tier that your business is set up correctly. Before you even think about incorporating your business, your business has to be set up because once you incorporate, these are going to be the things that they're asking for. Grab your, your, your business name on GoDaddy. Her Secret Vault is my business name. I own that name. Then lock down all of your social media. Every single social media platform I have is her secret vault, right? No one cannot come to me and say, hey, this is my name. No, I've had this name since 2014, right? Grab your business name and all your social media. You do not want to build something and then your social media is no longer available, right? Then you want to grab your business email. Business email is not a Gmail. Business email must be followed by your business name, Her Secret Vault. So Patrice at hersecretvault.net, right? Then you want to make sure that you have a business phone number. A business phone number is different from your cell phone number, right? It is different from your cell phone. Grab a 1-800 number to make your business look legit. You want to grab a business corporate address, right? When it comes to corporate address, when you guys go to the bank, you guys do not have to let the bank know that, hey, hey, Mr. Banker, I would like to open a bank account and use my virtual address. Guys, don't do that. You guys are going to get flagged immediately because the bank is going to say you need an actual address in order for you to operate. You do have an actual address. They don't need to know it's a virtual address. When they put that address in the system, if you guys are doing it the way that I'm telling you guys to do it, there's no way that they can identify that this is a virtual address because you got a proper address for your business. You got a corporate address for your business. You do not need to tell the bank, hey, Mr. Banker, it's me. I have a virtual address. I would like to open a bank account. They're going to tell you like they've been telling most of you guys, hey, you need to use an actual address. A virtual address is your actual address. When these bankers think of virtual addresses, they're thinking of PO boxes, they're thinking of iPostal, they're thinking of all the things that do not work for your business. So make sure that you guys are grabbing a corporate address that when you Google the address, it's an address that pops up and, it's, and it's, it looks like an actual corporate address. It is not a UPS store, it's not a, a, a bank, it's not a... It's not a, 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 a tax place. It has to be a corporate address. I've given you guys many different resources for that. Make sure that you're using something like an Opus. Opus reports to the credit bureaus. Use Regis. Regis is known for having corporate addresses, right? WeWork. WeWork is known for having corporate addresses. Do not go into the bank and say, hey, let me use my virtual address. Don't do that. That's only because you guys are not understanding what a corporate address is yourself. So you guys go into the bank and you tell the bankers, hey, I would like to build business credit off of my, uh, off of my virtual address. They don't need to know it's a virtual address. That's for you to know that it's a virtual address, right? All you need to let the bank know is here's my business address. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So we have everything that we need for our business to go and start to incorporate our business, right? Now we're going to go to the Secretary of State. We're going to go to the Secretary of State for, your, for whatever state that you're in. Go to the Secretary of State and incorporate your business yourself. You don't need to pay anybody to do it. Yes, you guys are reaching out to me and saying, hey, do you set up business profiles? Yes, I do. Do you set up EINs? Yes, I do. Do you set up uh, tiers for my business? Yes, I do. Can you help me build my business credit? Yes, I do. But I've given you guys the tools to be able to save yourself money. Because when you guys pay me to set up your business address or set up your business information, you're paying me for my time, right? You're paying me or you're paying my team member for our time. But I've given you guys the steps to do this yourself. Some people may be working a nine to five job and they can't set it up for themselves. Okay, that I understand. Or maybe you can set it up later on when you get off or however. But just take the time to understand that you can do this yourself. If you would like me to do it for you, absolutely. We have no problems helping you guys out. 
But remember that you're paying for our time. You're paying for our resources. You're paying for our steps to come in to get these things set up for you guys correctly. Right? Again, hint why I launched Bosses Build Business Credit Extreme University. I, la I launched the, the university to help you guys help yourself, right? Because you may not want to just build one business. You may build two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten businesses. And every time you build a business, now you have to pay somebody like me to come in and set up your business for you because you didn't take the time out to understand it. Bosses Build Business Credit Extreme University right now is at $397. It is very simple. It gives you guys seven diff sorry, six different ways to make money. From setting up your own businesses to setting up other people's businesses, right? To setting up your business profile to setting up other people's business profile, right? It shows you how to do tier one. It shows you how to do tier two, tier three, tier four. It shows you It shows you some corporate leasing. It shows you Airbnb. Wait, that's eight different ways. So you have eight different ways of making six figures. That's over a million dollar business that you guys are building through one university that's three ninety seven. But yet you guys want to just not take the time out. You want to still want to know if I can help you. Absolutely, I can help you. But again, I'm really putting the, this community together for our people to be able to help ourselves. However, I do understand that building business credit to some people may seem foreign. So you guys may be a little bit overwhelmed and you may need help. Sure, no problem. We're here to help you. But we also have a free business credit community. So you guys purchase the, the, um, the university. You have a, you, have a, um, you have a community behind you. The Extreme University is a group by itself, right? You purchase Bosses Bill Business Credit, just the ebook, not the university, because you have the university and then you have the 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 ebook itself that gives you step by step by step by step by step step. Either way, you guys are still winning. You just have to take the time out to just get it done. All right. So let's jump into tiers. All right. When it so you guys set up your business. You have your business set in place. You set up your business with your Secretary of State. You grab your EIN for free on the IRS website. It is a free number. You don't have to pay somebody to get you an EIN number because it's free. It is. It's a free number, right? So you have all of this in place. You go and you set up your business bank account. Again, keep in mind for those of you who are in the credit repair industry, credit repair is a high risk industry. Hence the name Her Secret Vault, right? When someone asks me now what Her Secret Vault is, I'm a consultant. I consult other businesses. I don't do anything credit repair. At least they don't need to know that. They don't need to know I do business credit. They don't need to know I do personal credit. It's a high risk industry. If you're in the industry that's high risk, such as credit, and you have the name credit in your business, it's going to make it super hard for you to get funding. What can you do about that? Very simple. You can change your name. When you change your name, you have two people that you need to answer to, right? Your secretary of state to let them know that you change your name. So instead of you having Felicia Credit Repair Solutions, you can do, you can change it to Felicia's, Felicia's, um, Felicia's, let's just say management delivery or whatever, you can change that name so that credit repair is not in there. And then you update your information with the IRS so they know that, that your business information has been updated or your business information, you updated your information to reflect a different business name, right? So for those of you who do have credit repair in your name, don't get discouraged, absolutely not. Don't get discouraged. It's a simple process and the simple process is for you just to Take the time and fill it, send in the paperwork, which will be an amendment. You have to send in an amendment with the Secretary of State in order for them to update your business name if you're in a high-risk industry, right? When you go to the bank, do not let them know that you're doing credit repair. You are a consultant. I consult other businesses on how to build their business, right? That's, that's honestly what I do. I consult with you guys as business owners 
on how to build your business. They don't have to know it's business credit. I'm just a consultant, right? All right. <clears throat> so business credit tiers are made up of five different components. At least this is the way that I want, this is the way I like to teach you guys to make sure that you guys are comprehending and understanding, right? So business credit has five components. You have your net 30, your retail, your, um, your fleet, your credit cards, and your loans. Tier one, most people ask, how do I get a paydex score? You need to have three vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet is the number one credit bureau out when it comes to building business credit. You have to have at least at least three net 30 vendors reporting to Dunn and Bradstreet. At least three. Can you do more? Absolutely, you can do as many as you want. But in order for you to acquire a paydex score, you need at least three of them reporting to Dunn and Bradstreet. That is your tier one vendor, right? Tier two vendor is your retail vendor. That's anything in retail. Anything in retail that reports to the credit bureau, you guys can add under your business. And one thing that I want you guys to start doing is that watching the industry that you're in, right? So if you're in real estate, you want to get accounts like Home Depot is going to help you in the game, right? You can get your plans to, 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 um, to model your house. You can get your flooring. You can get your, um, your light bulbs. You can get, so you want to pay attention to the industry that you're building business credit in. If you're also in real estate, you can use something like floor and decor. Floor and decor is simply flooring and, ca and cabinets and countertops. Same thing for Airbnb. If you guys are coming into the Airbnb game, you want to make sure that you're utilizing the proper vendors that's going to help you. Now, not all vendors are going to be able to help you in your journey, but you want to get as many vendors as possible. If you guys are coming in and trucking, you know that the most important vendor in trucking is fleet vendors, right? That is your gas card. That is the number one vendor when it comes to trucking that people in trucking pay attention to, right? So make sure that you're utilizing the proper vendors to help you build your business credit profile to benefit you. You're doing Airbnb, get the vendors that reports to the credit bureau but can also help you furnish your Airbnb, right? Help you furnish your real estate property, right? There's a lot of vendors that report to the credit bureau. You have to grab the proper vendors to help you. Tier three. Oh, let me back up. Tier two. So when you get to tier two, you want to have at least six vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet before you move on to tier three. So you want to have six vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet and at least three vendors reporting to Experian. Because Experian is where your tier three vendors start to come in which is your fleet. Now, as I mentioned to you guys before, when it comes to fleet, because we're in a COVID, we're in a COVID world right now, fleet is actually a mixture of tier two and tier three. So some people may be able to get fleet right now. That is great. But here's the thing that I tell you guys all the time, run your own race. If you build your business credit correctly, it's not what you get approved for, it's how much you get approved for, right? So with my, um, my gas cards, none of them falls under $10,000, none of them, right? None of them falls under $10,000. Again, it's not what you get, it's how much you get. So build up your tiers correctly in order for you for you guys to build, for you guys to maximize your vendors. So what I did, because I've never really explained this story because I, I really try not to get into it. Um, but within six months, right, I have been able to build a significant amount of business credit. 
How did I do that? I did that because I ran my own race, right? I invested in myself. I learned these tier by tier by tier by tier. I took chances because I knew when it came to building business credit that inquiries does not affect you the way that it would affect you personally. So I went, I went and I ran up, I, what they say, I ran up the tap or whatever. So every vendor that I, that I found out about, every vendor that I knew about that re re reporting to business credit, even, and I'm doing it in order, guys. Again, you have to do it in order. I took a chance and I ran those vendors. So sometimes you may see, for instance, you may see 50 vendors on your um, 60 credit, what am I looking for? 60 inquiries on your business and maybe only 15 of them is reporting. That's cool because it does not affect your business. Inquiries does not affect your business the way that personal affects your business. So I went all out. Nobody can tell me nothing. This is how I was able to build the amount of business credit I've built in a short time frame because I ran my own race. So instead of me getting three vendors, I'm getting six, I'm getting nine, I'm getting 12 in my tier one stage, right? Tier two, so, by, so within tier one, I'm at $50,000 worth of business credit. Tier two, I'm at $120,000 worth of business credit. Tier three, I'm like half a million dollars worth, of, a quarter of a million dollars worth of business credit because I'm running up the tab. I'm running my own race. I'm not waiting for y'all to tell me how much vendors I can get. I know the game. I know how it works. I know that at the end of the day, if I go and I do, if I go and I run um, an application and the application didn't go through, okay, on to the next one. This is why I tell you guys all the time, run your own race. So many of you guys get discouraged because you're like, oh, I see this person doing this and this person doing that. But remember, I always tell you guys, run your own race. What works for you may not work for you. What works for you may not work for you. And that's how I want my community to be. I want you guys to be a supportive community, but I also want you guys to run your race. Right? Okay, let's go into our tier three vendors. So we talked about tier one, tier one vendor, which is our net 30 vendors. In order for you to move on to tier two, you have to have at least three vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. Now you're in tier two. In order for you to move on to tier three, you need to have at least six vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet, right? You need to have at least six vendors reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. So with your tier one vendor, your limit needs to be 250 before moving on to, to, um, to tier two. That's easy. Granger alone gives you $1,000 by itself. That's in tier one, right? So tier, tier one, you need three vendors reporting. But before moving in to tier two, you want to make sure $250 is reporting on your profile first before moving into tier two. Then you move into tier three. Tier three are your retail vendors. Anything that's retail. Remember that. Anything that's retail is your tier two vendors. Have six vendors reporting before a minimum, not a maximum, a minimum of six vendors reporting before you move on to tier three. Tier three is your fleet vendors. Fleet vendors is super important for those in the trucking industry, right? Let me close this out here. Because I see this whole thing sticking. Tier 3 vendors are very important for people in the trucking industry. This is one of the, this is one of the vendors that they wait for when it comes to trucking. But you can absolutely get that within tier two as well, okay? Then you wanna move on to your tier four vendors. Your tier four vendors is your credit card. This is how you build business credit correctly, not utilizing your social security number. I do not teach you guys to build business credit using your social security number at all. You want to limit 
the liability that's going to fall on you as a business owner or fall on you as a consumer because you built business credit under your personal, something happened to your business and now you're responsible for the debt of that business because you personally guaranteed that debt. So take the time to build your business credit and separate yourself from that liability. If you guys do not separate yourself from the liability when it comes to building business credit, it's going to hurt you in the long run, especially if something happens to your business. So take the time to build your business credit correctly. Right? Then from our credit card stage, we go into loans. Yes, you can get loans for your business without having to PG it. Just build your business credit correctly. That's all. That's all it takes to build your business credit correctly. So those are the five tiers when it comes to building business credit correctly. Those are the five tiers that any business owner needs to build step by step by step in order to build their business, uh, their business profile correctly, right? I did a challenge in my group to kind of see where everybody was at. And I had a lot of people in my community say that within four months, they built $50,000. They built $20,000. They built $30,000. They built $60,000. And that's amazing for me for somebody who's teaching you guys to build business credit that you guys can now come back and say that you guys that you guys have been putting in the work to build your business credit. Right? So one other thing that I want to give to you guys and I kind of talked about it a lot um a few, but I'm going to start touching on this a lot more because it's very helpful for the, for those of you who are looking to build business credit, right? <clears throat> there are grants for every single industry. Every single industry that you're in, there's a grant for it. If you're in credit repair, type in credit repair for grant, uh, credit repair for grants, grants for credit repair business. If you're in real estate, grants for real estate. If you're in plumbing, grants for real estate. If you're left-handed, grants for left-handed people, right? There's a grant for every single industry. And again, uh, grants is free money, money you do not have to pay back. It is free 99 money. You can also do crowdfunding. Crowdfunding meaning that you can have people raise the funds for you. Or people basically investing in your business because you had an idea and you crowdfund for them to help you build your business. There's also angel investors. You guys can utilize angel investors. And all of this can be done even before you guys start to build your business credit, right? So before you guys even start to build your business credit, you guys can apply for grants, you can apply for crowdfunding, you can apply for angel investors. The thing with angel investors is that you have to have a solid blueprint, right? You have to have a solid blueprint of your business, meaning you have to have a business plan. They want to see that they're not investing their money into a business that is not serious about doing business. 